little parable in here that Jesus gave us. It's very beautiful and, and, and thought it was very applicable tonight. Maybe, maybe just for me, but I've enjoyed studying this little passage and thinking about it. But Luke chapter 14, verse 7. And if you look, uh, uh, my thought for you tonight is, where, where's your investments? Now, when we say that a lot of times, when we talk about investments, we talk about, we think about what? Return. Money, Money, right? Our investments. But let's read this passage of Scripture right quick and talk, just talk briefly about this concept of, of what we're investing ourselves in. In verse 7, it says, when he noticed, I'm, tonight I'm reading out of NIV instead of the normal King James Version, so it might be a little different, but anyway, I'm in NIV. It says, when he noticed how the guests picked the places of honor at the table, he told them this parable. When someone invites you to a wedding feast, do not take the place of honor for a person more distinguished than you may have already been invited. If so, the host who invited both of you will come to you and say, give this person your seat. Then, humiliated, you will have to take, your least, uh, take the least important place. But when you are invited, take the lowest place. So that when your host comes, he will say to you, friend, move up to a better place. And then you will be honored in the presence of all the other guests. Verse 11. For all those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. Now verse 12 says, Then Jesus said to the host, When you give a luncheon or a dinner, do not invite your friends, your brothers, or your sisters, your relatives, or your rich neighbors. If you do, they may invite you back, and so you will be repaid. But when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind, and you will be blessed. Although they cannot repay you, you will be repaid at the resurrection of righteousness. Father God, thank you for the words. And bless it to our hearts. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. As you read here, there is some symbolism, obviously, all through the Bible. And there's some going on right here a little bit. But let's talk about this because I really want you to ask this question. To what or to who are you investing in? And like I said, when we think of the word investment, I, I, I know I do. I immediately think to, comes to mind to Financial investment, right? Mm -hmm. uh, what's that? Uh, uh, the gnashing of teeth as men stand around often talking about uh, stocks and bonds. And I'm not one of those guys. I, I never was very good with the, that part of the investing. But it could be land or interest rates or treasury bills or bonds or CDs or God bless us all. If you have one, dwindling the 401k. <laughs> I don't even look. But in all those things, it's, it's, it's often the conversation is how's your investment doing? How's your investment? Did you see the Dow Jones dropped again today or, or something of that nature? And what we're really talking about as Christians is, is, is not so much how's your physical investments doing, but obviously what are you investing in and to whom? Mm -hmm. And this came to me uh, more and more this week. The past uh, week and a half, we've been very busy with opportunities in the church. Uh, not all of them well, but I kept thinking about, you know, the, the investment that we put in one to another, right? And that's really what I wanted you to think about tonight. There's a lot of people, uh, uh, I started to say, there's a lot of people better hope the Bible is wrong as a lot of people have invested into a lot of physical things, right? right? They better hope this Bible is wrong. But really the concept I want you to think about is what are you investing into spiritually? Now, spiritually, that comes physically from us. C.S. Lewis said that salvation of a single soul, one single soul, is more important than the production or the preservation of all the epics and tragedies in this whole world. One soul. One. Jesus Christ, think about this, was willing to risk his entire life for that same investment. His entire life and that investment of life for you and for me. He invested everything. Consider Philippians 2, verse 5 through 11. It says this. In your relationship with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who being at the very nature of God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage, because he certainly could have, amen. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant and being made in human likeness. And being found in the appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on the cross. You see, his investment right? His investment, he invested everything he had his entire life on you and me. And if you look at verse 9 of that passage of scripture, and because of his investment, it said that God exalted him, Jesus Christ, to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at that name, every Jesus, every knee will bow, 
in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue acknowledging that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the God and the Father. All because of his investment. And that, my dear friends, is what you call a massive return on an investment, right? That's, that's a, what we, that was that word we heard today? That was a jumbo investment, right? But now consider the stunning part of Christ's investment for our lives. Think about it from this standpoint. Jesus Christ invested his life in us with absolutely zero guarantee on return. Why? Because Jimmy us. gave us free choice, didn't he? <laughs> it was a yeah. speculative market. It was a, thank you, Joe. It was a spec <laughs> at, at the very see, there's no recorded provision in the Word of God in which God said that his son, if you will invest all that you have for them all, all the way down to your life, and die for all these people, I will save all of them. No, God never told him that. No, he didn't. Jesus invested in us with zero guarantee, which is odd to consider many when we talk about investment the first thing we say is what return. what I get in return yeah. especially when it comes to money right if I give you some money what well, am I going to get back for it right and yet Christ went to the cross without any assurance that anyone so whatever you say well he knew God knew God knows today right mm -hmm. but there's no guarantee amen it's because he gave us that free choice Christ gave all, of, all he had, everything, for just the opportunity that one more soul might be saved. That's the reason tonight, if you look at the parable in Luke 14, stated for us not to invest all that we have just in one, one another, but to invest in those who cannot repay us. And, and again, from the symbolism, it said from the, from the uh, let me find my verse here. Oh, it's easier for me to put back here. It said, but invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, and the blind, and the well-blessed, all that cannot repay you. And the same symbolism of that and the same thought about it, think of us as a missionary-type situation. Our opportunity is to share what with other people? Jesus, Jesus Christ. Salvation. Yep. See, my question, who are you investing in? It's good that we come together. It's good that we have our dinners, our fellowship. It's good that we come together. It's good that we pray for one another. But in this very passage of Scripture, what God was trying to tell us is that we've got to go out and to pray for those who don't know God, who can't see God, who are sick, who are... And when we talk about those terms, we're talking about if you're either in God or out of God. But in that, that's the opportunity that we have to invest into other people, the message of God, because of what he did for us. Because Chris, unrelated, unknowing, Christ went to the cross absolutely and said I will take this risk of investment just so that one of you might come to Christ see Romans 5 and verses 6 to 8 said you see and just at the right time when we when we still when we were still powerless Christ died for the ungodly very rarely will someone die for a righteous person though for a good person someone might possibly dare to die but God demonstrates his own love for us in this while we were yet sinners. And y'all know this last part. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Without any guarantee that one soul would ever be saved. I do hope you'll, by now you'll realize the Bible is not saying we are, all, we are all talking about going to dinner right here, right? It was a parable. It was a comparison. It was a parable. Christ was asking, to whom are you investing your life? Who are you in prayer and spiritual pursuit of? It's very, uh, it's been very busy, like I said earlier, very late, uh, late, and I kept thinking about this in our church family. We've had issues of illness and mental stress, financial issues, relationship issues. Uh, and, and what I kept thinking was, we just had life occurring. Matter of fact, Joe texted me last night and said, man, this is a busy day. I was like, no, it's a big family. Right? And in a big family, you have opportunity for all kinds of opportunities. And I just see a small, you know, each one of us in here probably just see a small window of what everyone else knows. When you think about our prayer list tonight, when we come in for our prayer list, and y'all have been, so y'all have another, y'all have another whole viewpoint, right? Another whole sliver of world that's going on in your world. Mm -hmm. And the opportunity that we have is who are we investing in? And again, Bernie, it's great that you and I can share and invest in each other. And we should, because it strengthens us. But the opportunity of commitment to really be able to invest in someone else 
is that simple opportunity to go and pray with somebody. It's not complicated. It, it's, uh, it's like I said, it's, it, it can be exhausting, but if the question is, when you have these opportunities, do you see it as an inconvenience? Right? Is it an inconvenience to you? Most of the time it is an inconvenience. Right? Could be. Could be. I mean, even even Butch retired has has things he wants to get done during the day. Someday, Cheryl, does he have anything to do? I mean, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but no, see, as a church member or even the church body, see, we can we can shut down and ignore the opportunities we have uh, to invest in one another. And when I mean one another, we we can become locked into this right here, and we can shout and we can praise and we can worship and Betty, we can say, "Man, life is good." But right outside that door is where our mission field starts. I really like to find them hitchhikers. They can't get away once they get in. I need to clarify what we're talking about now. I'm talking about telling them. I'm witnessing to them. Okay, I didn't know. Because, see, there's a whole. I think that's on that channel, that uh, uh, that murder channel, too. There's a, uh, you're making me nervous there for a minute. I thought we were. No, I'm just kidding. No, I'm with you, though. They can't get away. They can't get to listen to Jesus then. No well, problem. Well, when you think, and, and there, well, that's like the guy I had trapped in the truck last week from Houston. He had two and a half hours back from the fire plant. And anyway, I noticed he hadn't called me anymore. But anyway, obviously, he got all he needed. But, but see, this is what happens. This is what occurs when we're willing to help one another, uh, to care for one another, and, to, and, 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 and for the purpose of, and here's the key element, for the purpose of the glorification of God. Right? Now, I had a great time yesterday. Came off a job. Uh, Texas were flying around. I got and I thought I'm going to go see. I was already in time. I'm going to see Mr. D. Awake, alert, mm -hmm. and we got to sing hymns together. And I told Barb, there's some things that you can't unsing. I didn't want to see her in that condition. But then there's moments of life when you're singing in the middle of a hospital, and it's just an awesome moment, right? Mm -hmm. To the glorification of God, because nurses were coming in and out. You see what I'm saying? You get the opportunity to witness God. wasn't trying to be intrusive on anybody's territory. But, you know, they said, you can see. And we were just having a little church service there with her niece, and right? Yeah. See, there's the opportunity to witness God, yeah. right? Now, today, she's awake and doing better. Praise God for that. But, you see, these are the opportunities that we have to share God. Mm -hmm. That we would set aside that what we're doing and actually going to help someone. Christ was saying in Luke, if it's, if it's convenient for you, if you're reading this passage of scripture, see, he's saying it's if you if you're, if you're, if it's convenient for you, are you really making any sacrifice, right? right? Yes, Not no, that you got to go, no you know. Risk. Now, don't, don't let me take you down the wrong road. Now, there's some people that some religions that you know you need to mortar yourself to be. I'm not trying to say that, but what I'm saying is, if it's if it's just convenient for you, then is it really the is it really a part of an intent of a mission at that point? Are you really putting any effort into it? I'm not saying God doesn't make some things convenient for us. Uh, think about this other parable in Mark 12, verse 41. Uh, Y'all have heard this one before. This is about the widow's offering. And it said, Jesus sat down opposite the place where the offerings were put and watched the crowd putting their money into the temple's treasury. M many rich people threw in large amounts. But a widow came and put in two very small copper coins worth only a few cents. Calling his disciples to him, Jesus said, Truly, I say to you, this poor widow has put more into the treasury than all the others. They all gave up their wealth, but she, out of poverty, put in everything, all that she had to live on. Mm -hmm. Folks, what I'm trying to tell you tonight, when you take the opportunity to invest in each other, and what I'm really trying to say is when you really, like Bernie taking Coy today, Danny, you've taken people. Butch, I went to. I think y'all went over to see Coy last night. Uh, every one of you, know, I know that y'all have invested, right? Mm -hmm. See, that's investing. That's investing. Pat and Jim on the back's not investing. That's weird. Anyway, <laughs> no. no, I'm just kidding. It's, but you see what I'm saying? Sometimes no, investing is just. It, it's part of what we do. Listen, listen to this word now. It's not. It's not. It's, in this passage, we said it's not uh, about being a big Christian effort to give what is convenient, right? That, that to give what, like you're, you know, to have, as he said in this parable, if I have a lot of money and I give a lot of money, right? But to give what I don't have or all I have. And I'm trying to take you back to the example of what Christ said for us. I gave all I had for you. Right? 
And then I know as I look around the room by age tonight, y'all realize, and I know you do, the more the older we get, the more we realize the stuff of the world is exactly that. It's nice to have, but it's stuff of the world. And that's really what I'm driving, not driving at, but I'm just saying to have things, that's great. But the bottom line is, what's your true investment? Where are you putting your real time? Um, if, if, if the case was that I would only put in what was convenient, then Christ would have never met us at the cross. You see what I'm saying? Why would he? I mean, he could just say, you know, bless you and, and stayed in heaven or never came down. But see, those are the things that he took. For this reason, to, for the question is, to whom are you investing yourself? And I even think at some point, ha have you got someone in your heart? Honestly, family member, friend. We have a whole prayer list right here. Taking a person and just having that person on your heart to pray for them. To invest yourself in them. Because see, folks, here's the deal. As I was told, I was, had her family in the lobby last night. And, you know, was, uh, all that, there's that tension. It's like, hey, realize, win or lose, she's going to heaven. Right? Don't allow this to be a bad or good thing. I'm not a doctor, but this woman is saved. Mm -hmm. This is not end of death. This is continuation of life. See, I want you to be able to walk down the street. I've told you before and go, hey, guy. Yeah, I remember you. I helped you. You know, I helped lead you to Christ. Or I just simply prayed for you one time, right? Because let me let me clarify that word help. Do you ever just listen to someone? That's a big one. Not talking. <laughs> I was just, I'm sorry, I didn't know you know you were over there. <laughs> but you hear what I'm saying? Sometimes, but think about this, there's a lot of people that are, that live alone. Sometimes just having, just having a, con just Having a conversation, yeah. but listening, right? Mm -hmm. Having time listening. For very often, we don't we don't have the ability. To, and here's the deal. And, and especially, man, I'm learning a lot. Danny, guys, ladies, there's a lot of things that I'm running into that I, I like last. I can't fix that, right? I don't have that power. Right. And you have people looking at you, going, well, "What are we going to do? We're going to pray." Yeah. <laughs> right. Right? But the prayer, you know, the, the thought is, well, you know, you, you know, no. What I'm trying to say, many times in life, realize we don't have an answer. That's when it's even more important to listen, hear what the problem is, and then understand, can you offer advice to that situation through the Word of God? But sometimes just taking that, it's not all about just, you know, it's, again, the parable tonight. It's not about cooking breakfast or, or, or dinner and feeding. It's about putting some time into people that you know. And there's been some in this church since I've been here. Now that I've been here for a while, some of them we have, we have funneled tons of energy into. But you see, our goal is you just keep on keeping on. Right? You know, one thing I can... Uh, when I said, like, like I said, listening to somebody, it's a very simple thing, but it can be extremely powerful in their life, right? Uh, praying with people, talking and listening. And again, praying for someone. And I don't mean saying, I'll pray for you. I mean going to them and getting with them and pr just praying. That's what we're supposed to do as Christians, right? First Thessalonians said, 5.11 said, states that we are to comfort one another and lift one another up. See, that's the beautiful part. It's, 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 it's actually go physically uniting together and go pray with that person. Man, I'm hurting. Well, let me get in my car and drive over there and let's pray. Well, it's inconvenient to me. Everything in my life is inconvenient to me. The whole world is inconvenient. Basically, yes. It starts with my job and it just goes all the way I'm telling you, I'm right there with you. I'm done, I'm done with it. And don't misunderstand what I'm about to tell you. Sunday we had a prayer service. And I, and I, I wasn't disappointed, but I was surprised that we didn't have more people come. Because the very family we were praying for, very other families in our in our church have the same similar problems. And can you let me finish my class? I'm going to talk to your class when it's coming up. No, but you see what I'm saying? We had a, You have an opportunity. And I'm, again, I'm not condemning. I'm just saying, what, what I'm trying to ask is sometimes, is your hand up? I need help. I need help. I need help. And when there's a time to return that investment, come on now, Amen. right? Because sometimes people have their hand up all the time and they're in constant need, but when there's time to return the investment, 
they don't ever return the investment in someone else. And I'm not saying that's ugly, but I'm just saying as a Christian, that's not right. Right? We should invest in one another. And I, y'all know, I, I sneak up on y'all and then I'm getting y'all to think it because that's what I'm trying to get you to do. That's my job. But see, that's what I'm trying to say. A lot of times, you know, you have that, you, oh, I, I need a prayer. But do you ever pray for anybody? Do you ever get in your car and go pray for somebody? Do you ever go buy some groceries? Do you ever, I'm not saying, again, I don't even say the grocery part. What I'm saying is, do you ever invest in someone else? So you have to start looking at it like last night with folks going over to pray with Coy and be with him. See, you're, you're getting an opportunity as a Christian to be used by God to help Coy get through a difficult time. It's not, i got to go do this because Coy is blah, blah, blah. I'm going to miss my TV program. Well, a lot of you can miss a lot of your TV programs and you'd be okay. That's just extra free. So that was meddling. So that was meddling preaching joke. So anyway, I wasn't talking to you personally, but I could. No, 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 I really wouldn't. I just said, I get irritated with TV, obviously. But what I'm saying, see, if, how do you look at it, right? Well, I'm going to go, go over there and do that. Why? Well, and here's the deal. Here's the deal. Because it's a right, I've got to go do that. Or do you see it as God's given me an opportunity to go pray with this man? Because someday, here's my deal, someday, I hope someday the investment that I'm making in people, someday when I need it, people will return that investment. Now listen to me, I'm not doing it because of, but I do firmly believe that that's how God in a church family works. You would hope that they would return. You would hope that at some point, it may not be the one, it may not even be the person, I could go pray for Joe, and Joe may not ever come pray for me, because we know Joe how stubborn he is, right? No, but what I'm saying I believe that God will appoint someone to come and pray for me at some point, right? See, that's what I'm trying to get y'all to think about tonight. That should be a Christian. Again, as I said, our job is to comfort and lift one another up, which, which, which is to invest ourselves into each other. It can be messy. Well, you've already proven that. But Barb has a statement that if you're going to have friends, because that's what I used to tell we just don't have any friends. And think about that tonight. You see, you think about that in your mind. We don't have any friends. Don't Folks, to have any friends, you, it is messy. Because they show up when you don't want them. They ask you to do things you don't want them to. Amen. Right? <laughs> Tell them, then. You know, people get sick. They're like, well, you know, you know, you know, you know what I'm saying? But here's the deal. Life is not in the abundance of the things that we have. It's in us. And someday you're going to go to heaven and we say we're going to spend 10,000 years together. You better start investing in one another. This is the true thing. Philippians, and we were there Sunday, uh, verses two, uh, chapter 2, verses 3 and 4 said, do, not, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourself. Not looking to your own interest, but each of you to have to the interest of, of, excuse me, to the, interest of the others. You want to find a growing return on an investment, start looking for ways, asking God for ways to invest in other people. This, this, this deal back here on Wednesday night, that's an investment. But if you see it as an inconvenience, well, there, those little kids, they got germs and they loud, it's loud back there, and there's cheese and cupcakes flying, and then you hear Bert say, as in, Bert, Bert will tell you, did you hear the blessings of God back there? Yeah. Right? Because that is... That's an investment opportunity that we have going on back there, right? We're doing a little investing here June the sixth. June the sixth. Right out here in the parking lot. Got There's another investment. Never know. They're having free ice cream. Oh, oh I got it rolled down. Okay. <laughs> I got two jugs of banana. Pepper. All right, see, Danny, you can't. You know, the witnessing to that right there. Lost them right there again. Yeah, ice cream. I should have thrown the ice cream. No. But, 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 no. Focus. I love ice cream. But let me tell you this. See, you can't really experience the heart of Christ. I'm just telling you, you can't really experience the heart of Christ until one is willing to give their heart for another and not just when it's convenient to do so. Amen. Right? Uh, Where did I lose you at? No, no, no. Do you remember the other, I was telling you about two, the movie? Two, two little things just went dink, dink right here. Hang on just a moment. I just remember when we was talking last night to tell you about the movie about the guy teaching the basketball team to a full yes. of retarded kids. Is that where you went? Here's the team. <laughs> That's <laughs> Joe. Oh my God. I told you two little bees just went bink, bink right there. You didn't go down to the altar. Right? Oh my God. Oh, 
You see, come on, guys. There's only nine minutes left. Stay with Scott. You see, I do. I, this is what I deal with on a regular basis. Unless I bring up fishing, and then I lose most of them all together. See. In order to fulfill these roles that we're talking about, it's not again. It's not as you, again. It's not about time and money or interest. It, it's to give your attention to someone. Most people, folks in this world today, live isolated, even in the middle of people. They go to work. They go home. They go in their houses. Our neighbor. I talked about that. Not, you know, we we visited all of our neighbors, and I and I I, I don't mean it pro or con. It's just I, not one of them has ever walked, drove, driven up the sidewalk, and said, "How y'all doing?" Or like I tell you with customers, I've been calling customers for 40 years and I've had them retire 20, 30, you know, and I've had them, you know, I really don't know anything about you. Well, because that's never, you've never taken the time to say, well, what's going on in your life, Tim? Because most of the time it starts with, hey, Paula, here's what I need. Right? Uh-oh, we got a goat loose now. This is a difficult, I'm so sorry, Scott. I just... I thought we did another manger scene here or something. It's the team. I'm telling you. It's the team. Here we go. Yeah, but we're a champion team. When I get in the truck and I drive home, I'm going to look at her and say, why do I try to do that? Well, we're going to have to put our hands on you and pray for you today. Oh, I'm telling you. Y'all need to watch the movie. You don't know exactly what I'm doing. Joe, Joe, back, Joe, back, back. Luke 14 again. Luke 14. Oh, God. <laughs> See, to, to move your issues aside and to see others are hurting, or, or, and, and, and I really do, I, I know this to be a fact. Some days you can be so balled up in your world, and if you'll give someone else some attention, first of all, most, most of the time what I find out, wow, there's some really difficult situations out there, and what my little petty problem was, wasn't nearly as important as I thought it was. I mean, like, like going down to see Geneva last night, or uh, our, our walking... Uh, constant uh, example of grace, James Nance. Right? Mm -hmm. For us to complain, hang on one minute, for us to complain, mm -hmm. come on, really? When you see what he has to endure, right? Mm -hmm. And I mean, I, I, I know as well as I'm telling you right now, someday we'll walk, we'll talk, we'll sing. I know it because this is coming off him. Right. But you're right. But I mean, yeah. those exact, especially to those, and, and that's the whole deal, especially the people that can't give back. And, and again, I know that the scripture often goes about what you can give them physically, but what I'm talking about, there are many people cannot return the favor of what they don't know about Christ until you share it with them. And we carry it as if <laughs> it's like watching some of the NFL guys run football with the ball out here. They're just, it's just, you know, as they say, they don't cover it up and protect it. And we're very lucid that way sometimes with our salvation. We forget how important it is, the gift that he's given us. And how precious that is. And we don't reinvest that in other people. Right? I was going to say, um, we have a tendency when we're hurting not to reach out because we're in pain and hurting. But always remember that Jesus was in pain, everything they had done to him, and still walked to the cross. Amen. So, you know, admit, administer when you're in pain. It, come, it gives back. It re recharges back. And I've said this to y'all before, and it's, it's, this is a hard one. When someone offers to help you, allow them to hey, help you. Don't steal their blessing. Don't take the blessing away. I don't think that's how it works. I don't think that's how it works. It's a team, Joe. Hey, Joe. Joe. It's a team, yes. It's the team. <laughs> it's the team. <laughs> We're the champions. <laughs> come on, I got five minutes left. Hang on, come back, come back. See, it starts with investing your time into others. It doesn't have to be a big deal to help them to find salvation and go to Christ. I mean, when we think about my, my position as your pastor or our teachers, think about that on Sunday mornings. It's not about what we're bringing to the table. Obviously, it should be what God's bringing to the table. But in the opportunity of preparation to know that we're getting to share, that we're investing our time. And I hope every one of you, that if you're teachers, you spend the time to get ready for your class to invest yourself because you're getting a chance to reinvest God. But more importantly, you're taking your time, right? You're taking your time to really, just like tonight, regardless of the outcome of this group of people tonight, I spent time preparing this lesson for y'all. <laughs> 
but no, with all sincerity. You see what I'm saying? You're given these these small windows, and a part of it is it's like that statement, like I got to go to church Sunday, or do you say I get the opportunity to go and worship Sunday? And all of us have said it. I've said it before in my life. Oh, I got to go. I can't do that. I got to go to church Sunday. You know, Sunday's my church day. What's the rest of your week? Well, it ain't church day. No, but you see what I'm saying? Sometimes we don't even intend it the way it comes out, but it's just the fact of life. Do you start to change your outlook on life? Is that look at the opportunity that I have based on what he gave me to be able to share this with someone else? And as you know, often salvation doesn't come. I mean, people do get saved at church. They come, they get him up, they, right? They have, but often salvation comes through relationship with people. Right? It's not, it's not your first. Matter of fact, statistically speaking, they say it's about the seventh or eighth witness from someone before they ever accept Christ. Well, you might be the first six. Don't discount yourself. But if seven comes, what did I read you earlier? Just one more salvation. Amen. So we always got to go back to the glory. What's our point? One more salvation. Yeah, as a pastor, I'd love to be able to say we had 56 people saved. Right? But the bottom line is if we get one more according to everything I understand about the Bible... We have made progress, right? We've made progress. See, it's, it's wonderful for us to advocate, and we do this. Uh, uh, Betty supports our, you know, brings us to the mission table uh, three times a year, and it's great for us to talk about missions and support mission. But in reality, when we realize this effort is at the business end of our church, it starts right outside this door. It starts on the job. And it's not an overbearing, let me beat you with the Bible. You've got to believe God. It's a, hey, Wow, man, you're really suffering. What, you don't talk about it? Now, be, you know, understand that. Don't jump it in. Don't just, but you don't need to fix it. You just need to listen. And don't be surprised if they do want to talk about it. Yeah, that's, uh, I guarantee you that, I promise you this right now, if you'll ask someone, hey, can I, can, you don't want to pray about it? You don't, can I, you don't talk about it? I promise before it's over, God will give you the opportunity to say something. Right. Coming back to Christ. Here's the deal, folks. As a Christian, as a Christian, you are of God. God's purpose for you is to witness. God is not going to miss the appointment for you to be able to witness him. And it may be one sentence. It might be a paragraph. Just like the guy two weeks ago trapped in the truck, Chris. He opened up the door. He got two and a half hours. But it was not right. And he, th he said, one of the things he told me, he said, man, I appreciate you not getting offended. Thought, well, why would I be offended? He said, well, a lot of people, you start talking about religion. I said, bro, I'm not talking about religion. I'm talking about God. And I'm not offended by sharing my God with you. I mean, because I told him, I said, it's, it's either you can believe or not believe. It's not for me to force it on you. But that seed's been planted, right? But I promise, but see, here's the deal. Are you listening? What are you investing in? Man, we're intent when it gets down to money. Or, you know, we're going to buy, like I said, we're going to buy some land. Or what, you know, we're intent, are you as intent on, let me invest in my spiritual future. Because, oh, by the way, this is a return on investment to you too. Right? I mean, like Danny said, he'd be as happy into heaven just to be able to, you know, clean the streets. But I'm telling you, Father God said there are rewards in heaven. It's an investment that we're making in one to another. To invest in each of ourselves to help to pray, just simply to witness this is the greatest investment that you can ever have. You can say, well, I'm poor. I don't have no money. But to be, it's like the, the lady right there. That's what he was trying to say in that parable, right? She was the poorest of the poor, but she gave all. She gave everything she had. So well, I ain't got very much. Can you just pray with somebody? Can you love? Perhaps our greatest weakness as Christians is that, is, is that we, don't, we, we, we don't, because we don't invest in others. We don't have because we don't invest in others. There's a passage in closing tonight in James 4, 3 that says, when you, ask, when you ask, you do not receive because you ask with wrong motives that you may spend what you get on your pleasures. Also, for thy thought was in that whole deal, is sometimes we don't have because we don't ask, but we also don't ask, Jim, because we don't invest in each other. We don't invest of the things of the cross, which is simply to say, hey, man, I can't do this and that, but I don't, know, I don't see a person in this room that can't go pray with someone. The parable of the talent. Mm -hmm. Right? I mean, you think about it. I mean, in your own personal life, you think about it, but what and to whom are you really investing in? And I 